John Ward at Yahoo News, back here with you from the quick in, the, uh, in Cleveland for the Republican convention. I'm here with Dane Waters from Delegates Unbound. Uh, Dane, you were uh, observing what happened on the floor today. Give us a little background on what you've been trying to do the last week or two, even before that. You've been part of an effort to try to get delegates to vote for whoever they wanted to. Is that an anti-Trump effort, or is it uh, broader than that? No, it's broader than that. It's never been an anti-Trump effort. I mean, we've always maintained that the best way to unify the party uh, and to bring unity behind a candidate is for the delegates to be able to vote the, their conscience, uh, to freely choose the individual that's going to represent the Republican Party in November. Uh, so what we've been doing over the last several weeks and even before this is just to ensure that the delegates knew they had the authority to vote their conscience um, because the RNC kept telling them that, well, you're bound, you know, it, it, you had to vote for any a specific candidate. Um, and so what we were doing is that we were, we were pushing for, um, uh, on the night of the nomination, um, on the roll call, that um, the delegates could vote their conscience. And surprising to us that on Thursday at the Rules Committee, they voted to bind the delegates, which is interesting because if the delegates were bound, why they vote to bind them? Um, and so then, then... You were surprised by what happened on the Rules Committee? Well, you know, Kendall Unruh, as you know, from Free the Delegates, was pushing a conscience clause. Right. Um, and, you know, and it was just going to kind of codify the existing uh, freedom that the delegates had. And I was, you know, I was not overly surprised that that was defeated, um, uh, you know, because it wasn't actually a necessary rule. But I was shocked, honestly, that the, uh, that the, uh, uh, the Rules Committee actually took the Draconian um, step of actually binding the delegates. The first time they've done it since 1976. Well, they... they not to get too technical, but they did bind them in 2012, right? But no, they did, they did not bind them in 2012. I mean, when you came to the convention, they were able to vote their conscience as well. But the prop, the difference is, is that, um, I mean, other names could be put into nomination, uh, like Ron Paul. Uh, delegates tried to uh, push for his name to be uh, recognized, but they were not bound in the convention rules. The only time that the delegates have been bound uh, was in 1976 in the convention rules. Um, you know, there's always this theory. Oh, right. Yeah. Right. So the difference yeah. is, is that state law yeah. may bind them, but the convention rules is where really the delegates are, are, are free to vote their conscience. So the first time since 1976, yeah. um, the delegates have been bound. Let's fast forward to today. On the floor, you had the uh, attempt to get a roll call on the rules package. Um, now that that's gone down, is it basically over this attempt to unbind the delegates and to uh, have an alternative to Donald Trump, which was always, let's be honest, uh, a pretty uphill climb. Oh, yeah. I mean, that, that, as I said, this is bigger than Donald Trump. It's bigger than Cleveland. Um, you know, and it's funny because I think that uh, Donald Trump said yesterday that uh, uh, never more, never Trumpers, never more, whatever he said. And not that we're never Trump, but it's interesting how the people kept trying to count out uh, what these, these uh, supporters and delegates want to do. So I tell you, in 20 hours, uh, the delegates were able to get the signatures on uh, the petitions from 11 states uh, to, re to require a roll call vote. Um, so to fast forward, I mean, we'll talk about that here in a second, uh, in some, <laughs> once again, draconian act, uh, they, 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 they ignore the, those, those petitions that we'll talk about, but no, this isn't over. I mean, does well, what's, what's left? You've talked about trying to get delegates to abstain and deprive Donald Trump of 1,237 delegates, try to send it to multiple ballots. I personally have a hard time believing that that's going to happen at this point, but are you, are you trying to actually still make that happen? Well, I, you know, I, we are encouraging delegates just to continue to vote their conscience. I mean, even though they're bound. I mean, whatever that is. I mean, as, as we've talked about, I mean, if, if, if it's Donald Trump, then so be it. And, and just to, sorry to keep interrupting, no, but the barrier to what, you, what we, you've talked about in terms of abstentions would be what we saw today, which is if, if people abstain to try to keep his number below that magic number, the chair running the convention would not recognize those tallies from each state, and they would just sort of say, okay, we've, you've got, he's got the results. So that was kind of a, we saw a precursor today of what would happen if you tried to do what you've been talking about. No, it was, you know, it was very clear today that the uh, presiding chair will do everything in, in his power to ensure that the delegates are not hurt. I mean, you know, what happened today, as you saw, I mean, clearly, I don't want to get too technical about it, but when the vote occurred, uh, the no's clearly uh, were louder than the, the, the yeses. And the, uh, the chair gaveled it down and said, the yes, you know, the, the, the yeses have it. And, and, and what was really even more frustrating than that is that it was very clear that the, uh, the, that the delegates were upset about that. So there was like a little 10-minute um, ten, ten minute delay. And then he came back out and said, oh, by the way, uh, you submitted uh, signatures from nine states, uh, and three states have withdrawn their signatures. I'm like, really? Okay, what, what states are there? What's the process? 
I mean, why didn't he step up there to begin with and said, okay, it's not relevant, you know, so forth and so on, no roll call. So the process, I mean, I hate to use the word rigged. I don't like using the word rigged, but it's very clear that uh, that it is rigged against the delegates. And, and so is, what's our next steps? Um, I mean, they're very limited at this moment in time, I can assure you. Uh, but I, I can also assure you that these delegates, in some capacity, will make it very clear um, how they feel about Donald Trump, which, as I said, we welcome that. I mean, we... You know, our goal all along has been, you know, let the delegates just freely express how they feel. Do you think that's going to be a walkout or uh, some other kind of demonstration on the floor later this week? Well, I don't know. I mean, even today, I mean, what we saw today, the, you know, the only thing that was quote-unquote scripted out today was delivering the petition signature. That's it. And what you saw on the floor were the people well, even Even that, they had to actually go looking for the secretary of the convention who was nowhere to be found. Right. I mean, she hit. I mean, you know, she, you know, we had Senator Gordon Humphreys go down there to give the petition signatures, and she just suddenly disappeared and couldn't be found. And, and she actually never came out to get the signatures. Right. You know, some assistant or something came out, you know, to, to take the signatures. Um, you know, which we honestly we were concerned about whether or not they would actually get there or not disappear. Right. Like, you know, we, that's why we made multiple copies and gave copies out to everybody just to ensure that they just wouldn't suddenly disappear. Yeah. Um, but no, the process, uh, you know, I mean, in regard to tomorrow night, I, I, I mean, you saw a lot tomorrow of... Tomorrow night being the roll call? Tomorrow night being the roll call. I mean, you saw... For the nomination, not for the, for the rules. That's right, for the nomination. Right. I mean, the rules are dead. I mean, the rules, I mean, they made it very clear today that they were not going to entertain any, you know, anything associated with the rules. Right. Uh, this is very outrageous. But as far as the roll call for president tomorrow night, what will you see? I mean, I think this is a very, very organic movement. Um, you know, uh, I, I, yeah, I've heard a lot of things where people have been calling me all day saying, we're going to do this, we're going to do that. I mean, yeah. so it's not like we have to orchestrate anything. It's, yeah. it's very organic like this whole movement has been. Well, you don't have to orchestrate anything, but uh, definitely in these settings where you have, you know, a, a pretty uh, hard-nosed type of political approach, it probably does help to be uh, organized. I think we want to wrap up just on this question. And to, and to also to your point about the way it was run today, I had a person who... Uh, is very familiar. I can't really say. I asked him if he would say this on the record, and he wouldn't. But he's very familiar with the rules process. He said the delegates, and he's certainly not anti-establishment. He said the delegates got, in his words, job. Um, just to wrap up, a little bit about you. Your background. I was curious and, and interested to find out is in the whole process of petitions um, and referendums and how elections work. Isn't that right? It is. I mean, my, my whole background is about the right to self-determination, helping people understand what that right is and how they can execute that and how they can utilize it. So, um, so you know, the power of the people type stuff. So, yeah, no, I, I, I've had a, a wonderful life. and I've enjoyed every minute of it. And, and how does a, a, an approach to this sort of thing that's about power to the people, I think a lot of people would hear that and say, well, that seems at odds with trying to uh, unbind the delegates. Well, I mean, no, I mean... I, because people say, well, the people voted for Donald Trump and the delegates are going to overturn their will. Well, I mean, first of all, we, we, we live in a world where uh, voting in preference primaries are not electing anybody. I mean, that's the fundamental difference. When, when ballot measures are on there and, and people vote yes or no, they're voting for a specific law. When the president, uh, during the, in November with the presidential election, they're voting to elect a president. Pre preference primaries are simply that. It's just like going to your, you know, I, I'm not trying to minimize what it is, but it's like just going to the... You know, it, it's it's an unbinding it's an unbinding poll. I mean, a ballot. That's what it is. It doesn't bind anybody to anything. So, and once again, as we've talked about before, the Republican Party is a private association. They have the right to choose who's the head of the private association. So, you know, this is not. You know, everything I've done in my life is about respecting the rule of law. Okay, this is preference primaries is not the rule of law. It's a private association. So you can't equate the two in my mind. And. But once again, it's about the right to self-determination. These delegates should have the right to exercise their authority um, that they have in a private association. All right, it's been an interesting week going back to last week. Uh, Dane Waters from Delegates Unbound, you've been a big part of that. Thank you for joining us tonight uh, here in Cleveland. I'm John Ward with Yahoo News. Keep coming back to yahoonews.com for coverage of the Republican Convention all week. Thanks for watching.